Hello and welcome uh, to Church at Home. At Home, uh, Father Joshua Trefney here. Father Ed Estock, we're coming to you from the dining room at the priest house. And we are uh, contemplating the coming feast and of Pentecost and the conclusion of the great season of Easter. So Yeah, so Pentecost, um, a lot of times we think about it as the birthday of the church, uh, the time where the disciples uh, received the... Um, empowerment of the Holy Spirit to go out and preach the gospel. Um, but the Feast of Pentecost is actually like a lot older than yeah. just the Catholic Church. Feast, yeah. yeah, it's a Jewish feast uh, going all the way back to the time of Moses. Um, they used to call it the Feast of Booths or the Feast of Tabernacles. And I don't know if you have heard that word somewhere before, but right, we have a tabernacle in our church and we get that from the Jewish tradition of this feast where um, it was celebrating the tradition of God pitching his tent among us, which is what dwelt among us or tabernacled among us. That's what that word means. So um, this pitching of his tent first started with Moses and the people in the desert, and they set up a tent uh, to hold the Ark of the Covenant and uh, to offer sacrifice. And then eventually through time, it uh, got set up in a little bit more permanent way in uh, Shiloh. And then at the son of David, Solomon, builds the first physical uh, full building temple of, uh, you know, in, in uh, Zion, in Jerusalem. And so there is this movement of it becoming, God is becoming more and more and more uh, among his people, indwelling among his people. And mm -hmm. so then we get to Pentecost, where, uh, you know, where the, uh, the disciples are celebrating this history mm -hmm. of God indwelling with the people, and then God indwells in them. And so it's really this, mm -hmm. this fulfillment of the Old Testament tradition there. So those of you that have participated in the Bible study know this axiom that in the New Testament we find the Old Testament pre uh, prefigured and in the uh, New Testament the Old uh, Testament is fulfilled. And so we see this in uh, the use of the uh, Jewish Feast of Pentecost uh, now being inhabited or recapitulated as they say uh, by the Christian uh, gospel and the work of Jesus Christ in the Revelation. So uh, this is important to us. In John's Gospel, the beginning of John's Gospel, we hear this word tabernacle. Mm -hmm. uh, so it is the dwelling place, the home, if you will, or the seat of God among God's people. And uh, so St. Uh, John uses in the prologue, you know, it's very famous in the beginning was the word, uh, the word was with God, the word was God, and he made his tent or tabernacle or dwelling place among us. Mm -hmm. so, um, so as Father mentioned, this is um, some rightly thought of as uh, the feast when the Holy Spirit is poured out upon the church so that they might accomplish the mission. So we had the great commissioning uh, last week on the Feast of the Ascension, mm -hmm. and now we see the, uh, uh, the empowerment of the Holy Spirit upon the, the apostles uh, driving them out uh, into mission. However, yeah. what we are, you know, our favorite word, and you know, we uh, reflected on this word a great deal in our uh, Easter series or Lenten series on prayer, um, but uh, the tabernacling uh, effect of this uh, uh, Holy Spirit is not so much coming upon us to empower us to go out, it is first uh, coming and making our God's dwelling place within us. So mm -hmm. as Father mentioned, the indwelling of God in the Holy Spirit in uh, the body of the church yeah. and the members. And so it's not just uh, what is amazing, right, is that the Holy Spirit came down upon the apostles individually and he came down upon each one of us in our baptisms and confirmations um, and all of that. But the Holy Spirit only comes to uh, f full effect, full fulfillment of the Holy Spirit's desire when that indwelling is communal, 
So like the, it didn't just, it wasn't just Peter on his own who was filled with the Holy Spirit, even though he's the only one who talks in the, uh, the book of Acts, right? Uh, he's the one who gives this big speech. He's the one who does all this stuff after Pentecost. But it's not that that God is desiring. What God desires is the unity among believers. And so it is the indwelling in the group where the fullness is brought forth. Because like Paul tells us, um, it is we are many parts, but one body. We have many gifts, but one spirit. There is one, like, it is only in the communal nature, the community of persons, that we experience the fullness of God's desire for us, that we experience the full indwelling of the Holy Spirit when we dwell in communion with one another. Right, and the many languages uh, in the uh, book of Acts is particularly reflective of this mm -hmm. in as much as uh, all of them were uh, Medes and uh, uh, Celtics and Romans and from people from all over the world, uh, but they all were uh, understanding uh, the gospel, the apostles speech um, because and they were only speaking uh, their native language, but this idea of the uh, diversity in the unity accomplished by the Holy Spirit in the church. So mm -hmm. um, this can affect us in many ways, mm -hmm. uh, on many levels, uh, so that we, as uh, uh, I mentioned, uh, it can uh, ex uh, impact us in the acknowledgement that we have is that we are members of the church. So that's kind of what uh, I would say is our fundamental mm -hmm. um, feature today. However, it also can affect us and uh, in our prayer. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you can see that if this tabernacling and this indwelling of God is to be true in the church and in the members of the body of Christ, when you go to pray, whether personally or communally, uh, we really have to acknowledge not only that God, you know, uh, is in heaven, mm -hmm. uh, but that God has made his dwelling place within our hearts. And so uh, that leaves us in a, a different place in prayer, but also, of course, uh, in uh, the mission of our lives so that uh, we can, you know, claim to uh, be going out under the Holy Spirit. I got the Holy Ghost and, you know, and I'm going to proclaim the gospel. Well, that's fine. But you don't do it as an individual right. in possession of the Holy Spirit. You do it as a member uh, in the church, which is yeah. the dwelling even, place. And that's, that is so evidenced in the book of Acts, too, actually. This, like, that even, and Jesus did it, too, right? He sent them off two by two. And in the book of Acts, almost all of the disciples uh, or apostles that we hear about are going off in conjunction like when paul wanted like when they sent paul on mission they always sent him with people mark and barnabas and all these other friends Ty timothy and titus they didn't want to like it wasn't good to be alone because communion is so much a part of who god is like father son and holy spirit that communion is part of who we are as human beings and as church and as full members of the church filled with the Holy Spirit, right. we're called to that right. community. Uh, it, also in the uh, Acts of the Apostles, we see this gesture. Uh, you remember Paul was kind of going out to the Gentiles, not kind of, was going out to the <laughs> Gentiles, and this was causing some consternation among the Jewish mm -hmm. uh, disciples of Jesus. Anyway, in um, uh, the 15th chapter of the uh, book of Acts, uh, yeah, the first council. Yes, the first council of Jerusalem. And what uh, the Bible says is that they gave, they extended the hand clasp of communion mm -hmm. uh, to Paul and uh, Barnabas, etc., so that um, it wasn't just the mission, it was the membership. Yes. So yes. we have to keep that in mind as Catholics and Christians. And of course, the tragedy of division in the Christian church in the church of jesus christ is uh you know it's a it's, it's a, just that it's a yeah, tragedy it's a tragedy and it is a condemnation against the holy spirit mm -hmm. uh so that um jesus's uh, words uh you know at the end of his life may they all be one 
right. uh, need to be fulfilled. And yeah. that begins with each and every one of us, right? Yeah. Because if we recognize the gift of the Holy Spirit that we received first on Pentecost, and our baptism in, you know, throughout our lives over and over more and more of the Holy Spirit. As we recognize that in us and what that means for us as tabernacles filled with the indwelling of God, we have to recognize that in our brothers and sisters because right. what's the point of being filled with God if we're not in community right. with the rest of God? Right, right. So the fracturing of our lives personal lives, spiritual lives, uh, communal lives, church lives, and social lives, mm -hmm. uh, all of it is a reflection not of the Spirit of God, but of right. course the Spirit of the world. Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe this week we can uh, think about uh, our reconciliation uh, in the body of Christ and in the human family and um, be empowered to not only speak boldly and courageously on behalf of the gospel, uh, but also to live life, uh, and sometimes this is the hardest part, in communion mm -hmm. uh, of the Holy Spirit um, that is uh, the gift of uh, Pentecost and the gift of God uh, for us. So, yeah. all right. Thank you so much, and God yeah. bless you.